we're talking about the full bridge inverter. The full bridge inverter can take your DC source and put the full positive and negative voltage over the load. Here's our general load, and you can see the polarity is drawn positive and negative here, and we're measuring the current in this direction. We have four switches this time, and they're configured in this orientation. This is called the full bridge. It's supposed to be like a bridge, here's your bridge, one side of the bridge, the other side of the bridge. And then we call the half bridge, which we learned about before, just this part is half of that bridge. So we're going to go through the idealized version of the full bridge. And remember that we have these two half bridges, and we remember that last time only one of them can be on at one time. So if S1 is on, S4 has to be off because otherwise we're gonna violate a voltage or current law. So we're gonna run these switches complementary and the same is true for these two. They're also gonna be complementary. We can have two different states for these two and two different states for these two, which means that there's four total combinations that are valid. First, let's look at if S1 is on, we know that S4 has to be off. So for this one, we know that that's gonna be true. Then we have to pick the states of S2 and S3. So let's assume that S2 is going to be on. So S1 is on and S2 is on. If this is on, this must be off in order to not violate any of the voltage or current laws and they'll maintain the complementary switching. So now we have this state. Great, now we can look at this. Let's close these two. When we close these two, these two are open, the current path will be through here. And we can see this load is now connected directly over the full VDC. So our voltage here is VDC. Then let's look at the next one. We know these are complementary, this has to be zero. And now we're gonna to switch to this. So this is gonna be zero and this is going to be one. If we look at that, that means S1 is on and S3 is on. So these two are on. That's actually closing this loop. So here's our current path for this one. This is actually zero voltage. This is shorting around the load. You may be curious why we're gonna do this. It's actually advantageous for us in terms of making the output more accurate as an AC waveform. So go with it. This is gonna be zero volts over our load. Okay, let's check the more combinations. If we have zero S1, we know that S4 must be on. So that's a one here. And let's now just assume that S3 is on and S2 is off. With this, S3 and S4 are on, S3 and S4. So that means that our current path is going to be this way. Okay, we're drawing lots of lines on top of each other, but hopefully you can follow. So this one is here, the purple one. And we see that now the load is actually, the voltage over the load is negative VDC. So negative VDC. Let's go to the last combination. Here, again, this is zero, this must be one. And now we'll switch these two, one and zero. So these are all the switching combinations for the ideal full bridge inverter. We have switch two and switch four are on. Switch two and switch four are on. If we follow this through, the current path would be through here, the brown one, again, this is actually shorting our load, which means that there's no voltage on the output. With these switching states, we see here three different voltage that we can put over the output. Positive VDC, the full voltage here, negative VDC, full negative, and zero. And two different states will both give us zero. So let's draw this out here. So now we are taking this and moving it to the switching diagram. And the first one, again, is S1 and S2 on. 
and that's these two on where we get the full VDC over our system. So here, during this phase, when these two switches are on, we're going to get the full VDC over our system. Then we're going to maintain S1 on, but then we're going to switch this off, S2, and then switch S3 on. So now we're at zero, but current is still able to flow. That's the important part. Current is still able to flow through our load, but the voltage is simply zero. Now we can look at the next switching state. So before S1 and 3 were on, these two, and now we're going to turn S1 off. S3 is still on, and we're going to turn on S4. So we're turning these two switches on, and that's going to be the negative VDC. So we're going to see negative VDC over our load during that period. These two are on. And now we're going to do one more switch, and we want S2 and S4 to be on, S2 and S4. So this turns off, and this turns on, these two. And we're also going to get that zero through here. But notice, actually, we switch, flip which switches we used. So now we're going to go back to zero here. And then we would start the cycle over again. And we would go back to our VDC, so following this again. So using the full bridge inverter, we can get three different voltages. And here you can kind of see if we do just following the general trend, this looks actually more like an AC wave than it did before. Then if we add P PWM, pulse width modulation, we can actually much more accurately control the level of our AC output. So here we have looked at the ideal full bridge and the four combination of switches. These two must be complementary. You can plot this all out. We get three voltages, VDC positive, negative VDC, and zero. Using those switches and going through the switching states, we can actually create three different levels and change those signals in, in an intelligent way to create the waveform that we want at the output.